Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. We're on the seventh brew day in a row, I think it is today. And while I'm doing that, at the same time, I'm doing my first ever closed transfer. So we are moving the raspberry Philly sour off the yeast cake, which is considerable, as you can see. And we're pushing it across into a newly sanitized, brand spanking new fermenter, actually. And that seems to be running extremely well. It looks rather clear. It's a fantastic colour. And uh, yeah, it's quite a quite an interesting thing to see happen. So I'm just going to turn the CO2 up just a touch. So we're doing this. These these beers haven't they haven't been fermented under pressure. The only time they've had pressure on them was during the cold crash to prevent the Firmzilla's imploding. Other than that, they've not been sat with more than maybe one, two PSI on there, meaning I can replicate the beers on the, on the big kit because these tanks will not take much more than a PSI or two before they are uh, they start blowing the seals out because they're not pressure rated. But you think about the yeast at the bottom of the tank compared to at the top of the tank, it's got a metre or two of head pressure on it anyway. So having one PSI on here is only like the yeast being sat at the bottom of that tank. It's probably actually much more pressure than that on those tanks, but who knows, I'm rambling a little bit. So here we are anyway, pressure transfer, everyone's doing them these days. and. Uh, like I said the other day, I did put the, um, can we see it, it's there, I did put the stainless steel nut on the bottom of the float, you can't really see it, maybe we'll see it afterwards, I don't know. So that means that the, the bottom of this dip tube stays submerged during the transfer, thus preventing, oh it's got quite some pressure in it now. Yeah, we're up to about 10 psi, so I'll just turn that off. Yeah, so that's going to keep the dip tube submerged, preventing it sucking bubbles of CO2 during the transfer. And I suppose the only bad thing about that would be filming. But there we go. So what do you think? Looks grand. I do like these clear fermenters as well, particularly when you're watching fermentation happen. Right, anyway, this is the cherry, uh, the raspberry, even, the raspberry sour. I'll show you a little bit of the clothes transfer for the mango as well, and maybe even the uh, Kvayak or Kvayak, um lager which is actually really orangey. I was trying to explain the other day on a video what it tastes like. It tastes like a Belgian wit, which ain't a bad thing. It doesn't have any wheat in it at all though. So we brought the fermenter from Zilla over to the cask wash. Uh, that makes me think actually. Yeah, the heating's off. I've just bought, oh I don't want to have the heating on for the caustic, otherwise we'll end up with uh, kind of melted firmzilla. But yeah, I've given it a rinse on the centre, which is the rinse. This is the caustic, it's already had one hit with the caustic. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? There's just one little bit of Krause in there, if you can kind of just see it. So let's hit the start button. This will then give us uh, three minutes, it says on that clock. Three minutes rinse of caustic. In the bottom I've also put the cooling coils as well, just to give them a soak. Seeing as we did use a wild brew Philly sour yeast and not just something like 05, cross contamination could perhaps be a concern, so I'm going to take every precaution. Anyway, let's press the button and watch this. Isn't that a pretty sight? Right, 
Right, we've moved on to the Mango now. She's transferring. Closed loop. CO2 purged. Wonderful colour. Looks brighter on the camera than it actually is to me. I'm just hoping that all that Krauser ring do not fall off the top into the uh, into the liquid and ruin it. There we go. I'm zoomed in there. I thought I was. Looking good. Doesn't look like orange juice. <laughs> 